The new girl runs through the streets of Arcadia, avoiding the Thors and fleeing into the woods. She lets A-Force out from her body, and they thank the girl for her help. Nico remarks that the girl, named Singularity, was shapeless once, but she watched A-Force and learned from them. From Dazzler, she learned to smile, Captain Marvel taught her to fight, and Nico taught her to feel. But She-Hulk thinks that after all she has done, Singularity could not have possibly learned anything good from her. However, the cosmic being says that Jennifer taught her to give, and forgive, and gifts the Baroness with a lock of Medusa's hair. She-Hulk is moved with this and says that within the portal she saw a rainbow bridge. Only two types of people can control that type of magic the Thors, and anyone else with a connection to Asgard. Nico comes to a realization, and is furious. At the plaza of Arcadia, the Thors are struggling to find A-Force, but they know it will only be a matter of time. They go to their informant, telling her that there is little doubt that A-Force's traitor will be made Baroness. Loki replies that she always thought Queen had a better ring to it, but the Asgardian regrets what happened to Medusa, who Loki thinks was misled by She-Hulk. As she gazes out of the window, Loki realizes something is wrong. There are no stars in Arcadia. The women are then cheerfully greeted by Singularity, and A-Force bursts through the window. They begin to pummel Loki and the Thors, and She-Hulk knocks the would-be usurper out into the plaza. The Asgardian tries to blame Jennifer for all of this, saying that the Baroness got America expelled. Loki then forms the earth around her into a massive goliath, and it swallows Jennifer whole. But She-Hulk easily bursts through her captor, and attacks Loki once again. The Asgardian throws her aggressor off by summoning some snakes, and prepares to finish the now entangled Baroness off, only for Loki to be knocked down by Nika. Loki tries to explain to her ward that she did this all for America, but Nico points out that the portals were the start of all of this. It's Loki's fault that America was exiled in the first place. She admits that her guardian always loved her and America, but that the Asgardian loves her power even more. Realizing that Loki has tricked the Thors, Gamora pins Loki down, and the woman is robustly defeated. Loki bitterly declares that if she can't have Arcadia, nobody can. The Asgardian unleashes one final spell that launches high into the air, and straight into the wall. A horde of zombies begin to assault Arcadia. The others look on in shock, but Jennifer knows what to do. For what may be the very last time, she orders A-Force to assemble. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of A-Force number 4. So we have just one more issue of A-Force left. It's no secret that I've been really digging this title. It has a lot of characters I like, some great art, and a story with high stakes that doesn't contradict the nature of a tie-in to a big event like this. It stands on its own quite nicely, but still feels like it matters. The fate of Arcadia is up in the air rather than all of Battleworld, and I actually care what happens to the main characters in this lovely little island. But out of all of the A-Force comics, I have to say this one was the weakest. Each of the previous three issues had something unique to offer. Issue number one had a Megalodon, issue two had the Sentinels, three had the Thors, and issue four featured, well, Loki. But that's the problem, because having Loki be the traitor is hardly much of a reveal at all. It's literally the most obvious plot twist ever, because at this point, it's almost fair to say that Loki and Traitor are practically synonyms. So that whole aspect of this story feels very predictable. And I really feel like that drags this story down. Now it's not a bad comic or anything, and I still pretty much recommend it, but it does bother me. Loki was by far the most obvious choice for a Traitor, even back when the story was showing Medusa being this big voice of dissent, because, well, it's Loki. It was much more interesting when Loki was this parental figure that genuinely cared about her wards, but well, now it's just the same old character, so her turning traitor really feels tired and a bit obvious. But it's hard to be really upset about this. It does fit well with the story, and it wouldn't have made sense if someone like Nico or Captain Marvel was the traitor. And I think what really saves this comic is the ending of this issue. 
Oh man, that ending. It has me excited for number 5, and I really don't know where this story is going to go. A giant hole in the wall letting an endless horde of zombies into the domain is a real problem, and I look forward to seeing how A-Force gets out of this one. I'm not entirely sure how an island is supposed to be connected to the Deadlands, but it's such a good plot point I'm kind of willing to ignore this. So yes, in spite of one major problem and a couple of plot holes, this comic still works, and it works well. I do recommend you check out A-Force for yourself, as I have consistently found it to be fun, colorful, and upbeat, which has been really refreshing given the dark and somber tomes that we see in most of the other Secret Wars comics. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.